Sanbonan Dumelang. See how easy that was? I got to address you and make sure that I encompass exactly who you are. If I say to you, yo, what up, what's good? Firstly, you're going to feel like I'm not honoring the role I'm in. So let's try that again. Welcome to GMTV. I'm your host, Ukokomo. Today, we're talking about the different protocols of addressing umtanawa matlos, how to behave in Dumbeni, how to prepare for your sessions, and most importantly, how to prepare for a reading. Stay tuned, you won't want to miss this. you can address the healer. Firstly, it's from umgoma to umgoma. When we see each other, se akuka pansi, togoza koko, togoza, se abingelelana. There's a nice fair exchange and acknowledgement that both of us have ascended se situasile. This is also for a new person or safuma e pesweni and perhaps they spot umuntu omdala ugxoke ibhayi and unobhlalo you can see someone uthwasile versus someone that just wears ihialethu as part of their journey when you see this person doesn't matter even if you are in town don't shy away from the opportunity of ukhamba uthokozisa kulogogo because that's going to add on to klagani pha kwakho nomsebenzi wakho ukuthi ube nokukhanya by you being able to recognize someone else you are bringing that recognition and respect back to yourself so don't shy away from such opportunities something else a lot of people like to act like being in town is maybe i don't like attention to myself i mean for instance if you're already wearing a hia over your clothes you're easily identifiable in the group that you are in so you might as well carry out the whole of your of your role when you do step into society then there's the greeting that comes from a person an ordinary person ongathwasanga versus a person othwasile if you are a person who's interested perhaps in our services or you want to ask and inquire about a certain topic that's going on in your life and you step into our dms or you see us across the road or you just bump into us you would again come to us and say tsokoza koko or lisedi ngkhunu or kamaku those are the different kind of languages speaking to the nguni sisuthu as well as khosa all those different ways of greeting is saying i acknowledge you in your greatness i acknowledge you in your role and i am coming to shed light on your life so that you can in turn enlighten me about things that i don't know so if we skip this very crucial part you've actually stand a chance of uh besides annoying but also insulting lelo tlozilelo because umuntu omdala essentially so even if i may be in my early 20s or early 30s it doesn't matter you still have to recognize my spirit for exactly what it is so these nice things and these cool words that we call each other in this part of the world they won't suffice how to prepare for a reading or a session with a sangoma so firstly you make an appointment for those that actually take appointments otherwise before you just walk into a person's space you could do the following for those that have set appointments you now have your date you know exactly when to show up now you have to do the work that comes beforehand Let your ancestors know about the goko that you're going to inquire with, that you're going to have a session with. Most importantly, this is the part where you set your intentions of what you're trying to achieve in this session. So, let's say I'm having all these different dreams about snakes, snakes, snakes and more snakes, rivers, rivers and more water, whether I'm in it or I'm about to get into it. What about school and this classroom business that doesn't end in my in my dreams? All of those are setting a, set, a setting a certain tone to your life. 
But the only way you can decipher that, if you haven't learned how to decipher dreams, is to go to a Sangoma for such divination. They're going to use bones, a glass of water, candles, iskupu, or anything that they're going to use to be able to invoke their spirit to guide you along your way. So now before you set your intentions, you have to first identify what is your problem. Your life being stuck can't be the basis of everything. If perhaps you keep on dating and you can't sustain relationships, um, or you're just newly married, but there's a lot of noise in your home and there's a lot of arguments, something is wrong. You can feel something is amiss. Or maybe you have like a weird experience in your home where certain things just catch fire and they're engulfed in flames and things are burned and destroyed. All those are different signs that something is going on with you. So then that is your intention. That's what you need enlightenment on. So the different ways of doing that, pray, pasta, meditate. We talk about it all the time. Make sure that you speak to your ancestors on all these different levels so that you can get some of the insight before you go actually into your sessions. Second to that, you need to make sure that you ground your spirit physically. How do I mean by that? Self-care is important. You can take this opportunity to cleanse yourself with coarse salt, iwasho, rainwater, the works. The list is endless that you can be able to use and bath with as you set your intention even more. So now you've set your intention. Make sure you jot down all your questions. Take a notepad with you. Bring your dream journal so that you can have an effectively used session with your healer. When you take your books along with you, it allows you an opportunity to take in all the information you need as well as be able to cover all the questions you want to ask. If the session is limited, perhaps you can take your questions and then record the session. Please make sure that you ask the person in charge of the session if you may do so. It is illegal to take a recording of someone without their knowledge. So please be on the right side of the law and show a bit of courtesy and kindness. Once your session is underway, you're obviously then going to be invited into Endumbeni. Now, this is the part where it talks about you, the individual. How are you dressed, the language you use, and the respect you show. So you can go there dressed in your dress, if you're a girl, and your pants, if you're a guy. Try avoid wearing shorts and dumbin. You take off your shoes upon entry, and then you walk in as directed. You sit down wherever you're shown, and then you wait for the session to begin. As a lady, make sure to cover your shoulders or at least wear a dress as long as mine that covers my arms and does not expose my arms. You're going to cover your head with a wrap. Any duke of your choice will do. Sometimes other people even like to bring another cloth to wrap around their waist, just like a makoti halokobukhading. That's another form of, uh, of, of respecting ancestors. So now you've been placed down, you're waiting for the session to begin. Then Ukoko is going to uh, maybe perhaps introduce themselves to you and tell you how they work. You must make sure that the monies that are needed, the offering that's needed for that session is in cash. I know we live in a technological society, but Ndumbeni does not use plastics. You won't find Ukoko saying, here's my card machine. And even if she did, you guys would go off on a tangent saying these gokos are too technological and taking away from the essence of Bungom. So make sure that you go with all the monies that you need. In most instances, you are going to need a little bit more extra cash than what is required of you. Because whatever the findings are from that session may lead to a cleansing or anything else that can be offered to you as a solution thereafter. So make sure that you are prepped and ready for this occasion. Ugoko is going to then tell you to Kanyise. Take out your offering. You're going to place it on the floor and then she's going to ask you for your names and surnames. And therefore, your session has begun. Please be mindful of this because anything that you don't grasp at first take is going to be useful when you record it when you get back home. These sessions become very overwhelming, especially the type of questions that you have and the real reason why you needed this person to help you in the first place. So don't expect yourself to know exactly what was said in the sessions. 
Sometimes you may be given a set of rules and instructions for you to go carry them out at home. If you're not writing them down or recording this, this is going to be extremely difficult for you and you're going to make mistakes. You don't want to make those. Another thing about readings, guys, please make sure that identify your three top healers that speak to your spirit. Even if one of them can be a referral by an absolute stranger. When you go to these top three people, you're going to not compare, but verify and fact check. So every time you have this recording, you go back home, you write down your notes to see what was said in this session and what's the solution provided. You go to the next and the next. Eventually, when you consolidate and bring all this information together, you can see there's a thread, a common thread along these, all these different conversations. And from there, your spirit will innately know which person to, co to continue with. So don't always try to find the first Sangoma nearest to you or the first available Sangoma on the internet and then feel like this is my place, this is my person. There's many things that you can learn by going to the different kinds of people. I mean, for instance, if you walked into Indumbayami, there's a mood, there's an energy, there's a setting. And when you step into it, you are going to pick up on the information you need to pick up on by virtue of just being in that space. If you're uncomfortable, you'll definitely know. If something is extra and, and, and overcoming in that space, you'll certainly know that too. So train yourself to be able to pick up on information that's not just eye orientated. Finally, I can't think of a more important point. Please make sure that you ask someone to accompany you. Family is always the first best option. Why would you take someone else to go help you listen to Indabazako, your business? Purely because, again, these sessions become overwhelming. And sometimes if I bring a certain conversation to you, you don't know what questions to ask in countering what I'm saying to you. We're not rather disagreeing but the back and forth is going to help you come to a better space of understanding the why and the need of something being important if you can grab a friend that's even better some people who are on a spiritual journey together with their friends that's the best way that you can use your friend to understand exactly who you are and vice versa if you can share your dreams with each other and try to decipher each other's dreams, then you certainly can come into these spaces together. It's literally great learning for everyone. But if you try to do your things in silos, this information is going to overwhelm you and it's going to be difficult to understand. So protect yourself by taking someone with you. Anytime you step into a Sangoma's practice or a healer's practice in general, anytime they talk about marriage, sex or you guys coming together um, via sexuality, then that is not a true practice of great healing. We will never ask you to take off your clothes or partake in sexual activity, or you have to be my wife or my third wife or my, uh, my husband, and or you must show me your genitals. Anybody who says that to you, that is the first sign that you should have that this is not the place that is gonna be great for your healing. But to be honest, I'm pretty sure you would have other pieces of information come to you that would tell you that this place is not the one. So again, don't force things because somebody is popular or known in the community to be a really great healer. This person might see a different thing out of you and not see you as a patient. I need to make something very clear to you guys. Please stop coming to people's indumbas and asking for free services. You stepping into the DM is not showing that you're respectful of that person's expertise and learnings. You coming in Dumbeni with money that are missing or thinking that you're just gonna bum off a reading from a friend who's a healer, that's not very kind or respectful. It's very different if you're in a dire situation and you can only afford so much. Then that's a person that can be helped and can be respected for their honesty and transparency. But don't try to pull a fast one on a mungoma because you're not going to get as much as you're trying to dupe them out of an experience, you're going to essentially be duping yourself out of one too. Because these laws, you will not bring out all the information that you need to hear and learn about yourself. Some are going to be hidden. Why should you not ask Wungoma for free stuff? 
Firstly, imiti is very expensive. The herbs we use come from different areas in our country and on our continent. There's a lot of traveling that goes into that. Most of the time we travel in groups and we have to pay some of the people that are going to be helping us and assisting us dig them out and prepare them accordingly. Also, we have gone to school for the things that we have learned. Whether or not you think that we are worth the hype or not, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you get bump into the certificates hanging proudly on our walls to show that we are acknowledging the people that we are. There's a whole body behind us, a whole set of rules that govern us. So you can't expect to come into my space and feel that by using sympathy that I will have to be forced to work on you and assist you along your journey. We are human too. We also need to take care of our families. It's different if you can't afford something, rather express your difficulties. Don't abuse umsebe nzubungoma. It's important also that if you're going to be putting a question perhaps on your timeline and wanting to ask a different number of people, rather copy the same message many times over to all the individual healers, rather than tagging them all on the same mail because it almost seems like you're putting them up against each other. I mean, if some other Goko responded, to a post that I've been tagged on and they're saying exactly what I would have said, I wouldn't bother answering anyway. So you're not gonna end up getting the information or the feedback that I would give you that at the time I'd feel that I want to share with you and not that I'm compelled to. So guys, be kind to us so we can be kind back to you. Otherwise, we're here for you anyway. We care about your well-being. We want to put you back into balance. We want to help you with your dreams. We want to help you along your journey. We want to be the people we needed for you. So if you're going to miss this opportunity, then you're going to lose out on the things that you actually, actually need. That was me, your host with the most, Koko Moyo. Thank you for tuning in. Togozan. take this opportunity to cleanse yourself with coarse salt, iwasho, rainwater, the works. The list is endless that you can be able to use and bath with as you set your intention even more. Now you're prepared. <coughs> like I even got goosebumps my entire body. <coughs> Like, you know when pins and needles are coming out of you? Like, my entire body. Like, I'm thinking, what kind of cough is that? <clears throat> okay.